Det finns ingen väg tillbaka. Sverige blir aldrig som det varit. Europa är i förändring och Sverige behövs som en trygg plats för människor på flykt. Nu måste vi söka vägar framåt och hitta ett sätt för alla att leva tillsammans. Det är dags att inse att nya svenskar kommer att ta plats. Med kultur, språk och vanor. Och det är dags att se det som en positiv kraft. Att vara svensk måste få vara mer än hur färg och födelse ut. Det måste få vara du, jag och alla tillsammans. Det är inte bara nya svenskar som ska integreras. Alla behöver integreras, även etablerat svenskar. Integration handlar om ömsesidighet. Låt oss skapa en framtid som bygger på lika delar realitet och framtidsro. Låt oss bygga ett land där vi sätter hat och rädslor åt sidan. Vi har alla det nya landet inom oss. I våra synsätt, tankar och handlingar. Det är dags att vi tillsammans formar ett land som är stolt, inkluderande och hållbart. Något nytt. Det nya landet. Or they could just vote out the politicians who apparently think that they are teachers. It's very annoying when a politician who takes your taxpayer money to feed themselves believe that they have the role of educating you. I mean, nothing is more condescending than that. The politician is supposed to be the person serving the public, not educating the public. Now, regarding the way of thinking that the politicians in Sweden were trying to educate their country in has to do with uh, the mindset of the elites. I mean, here you have in the Jeff Bezos post an article calling the right-wing coalition in Sweden the anti-immigration party. Now, I do understand that Jeff Bezos is upset because uh, most elites, they have a different view of the world, which is that a nation state is just a territory on which economic transactions happen. Unfortunately, they did not consult the peasantry, whether they agree with this or not. Uh, for many people, a country is also a way of doing things, a culture, a language. And if you have people from a opposite culture coming in, you're going to get clashes and conflict. Like, for example, Sweden. They absolutely love LGBT ideology, they are very progressive, forward-thinking, they, they like feminismus. Now, if you're going to get people that are from a very conservative culture, well, you're going to have clashes, which is apparently what ended up happening, and this is why people voted the way they did. Uh, also, the problem is that people like Jeff Bezos, who support this ideology of uh, a nation-state is just a place where economic transactions happen, They do not enjoy having debates. They do not like talking about things. They use political correctness. They use censorship. If you don't agree with them, you can get fired from your job. They use social pressure. Unfortunately, you can't uh, social pressurize people in the voting booth, it seems. You can't uh, do any of that. And um, while the left likes to pretend that problems do not exist and everything is fine, Unfortunately, people do speak with each other outside of the internet, outside of the online space. They do notice the problems and eventually they vote accordingly, much to the dismay of the establishment. Now, what I find fascinating is that I looked at the policies of the new party and um, I wouldn't consider it uh, even a right-wing party. The only thing that uh, the press likes to call them far right for is that they want to be tough on crime and that they want immigration to happen legally and to, to have a way to set percentages on how many people can immigrate and from where. Since when the fuck is that far right? I mean, okay, so first of all, if you're not going to be tough on crime, uh, why don't you dare just decriminalize things? Why not, why not like, okay, assault, burglary, just decriminalize it then. If, if you don't want to enforce the law, well, why even have it in the first place? And secondly, uh, I mean, Sweden did receive a significant number of immigrants. Uh, don't you think there should be a time where they get to integrate? And, well, apparently, or at least the old Swedes, at least the old Swedes to integrate. Huh? Like, shouldn't that happen? Now, I, I know I'm, I'm on the bewildering opinion that if I travel to Saudi Arabia, so if I'm a Romanian, right, and for example, my tradition on Christmas is to drink wine. Now, if I travel to Saudi Arabia, drinking wine is prohibited there due to Islamic values. And, and I believe that if I travel there, 
I need to integrate. I need to become more Saudi, not the Saudi Arabians to become more Romanian. Like that, that makes sense, right? But well, apparently it doesn't make sense for uh, the people at the, the Jeff Bezos post. That uh, is far right thinking. Like, no, if, if Romanians go to Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia needs to become more Romanian. I, I just mind blow. But overwhelmingly, no, I do not think that the current establishment can even be called right wing, let alone far right. I mean, they're not arguing for smaller taxes. Uh, they're not arguing for uh, smaller government. Uh, they don't seem to be against uh, sustainability, which is the new word to replace equality. They, they, they just don't want as much immigration and they want to be tougher on crime. Apparently, that's enough to be far right. Not, not even right, far right today. Uh, a lot of people are asking if they're globalists. Um, so how do you define globalism? Uh, go to the World Economic Forum page. Like right now, go Google. Okay, Go to the World Economic Forum page. Look at what they are trying to achieve. And then the question is, are the people in power trying to achieve the same thing? If yes, okay, they're globalists. Now, looking at the anti-immigration party, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of months we see them trying to build back better because I don't see it contradicting their main platform. I mean, you can build back better and at the same time, you can be tough on crime. And you can restrict immigration. I mean, they're not mutually exclusive. It remains to be seen, I guess. It remains to see who they get in government, the coalitions, you know, that type of thing. But anyway, right, uh, they also want to stop the Americanization of Sweden, which I found very interesting, like all of this uh, identity politics bullshit and other garbage imported from America. Like, for example, the N-word, okay? There is no equivalent of it in the Romanian language. Like, we, we have no word in Romanian language that if you say, regardless of context, you can get fired. Well, apparently the N-word exists in Sweden, right? Like, if, if you say it in English, in Sweden, you get into trouble. Like that, that is so bizarre, right? You're, you're importing cultural aspects outside of your nation uh, with a nation that, that didn't even have anything to do with, like, the, the United States in the past, right? It's like, mind-blowing. So I guess that's what they mean, the Americanization of uh, Swedish politics. And uh, if you look at Twitter, I found something else that's very interesting. Like, when the Queen passed away, there were a lot of blue check marks that sent very vile and disparaging remarks towards uh, the, the Queen. Almost entirely Americans. Like, you, even like minorities from within the UK didn't have such negative things to say. Or if they did have negative things to say, they weren't like rude and insults and they, they were happy that it happened, right? Like, no, you didn't see that in Europe. Almost exclusively from the US. Like, and I think that this is the biggest win here. It's taking back the conversation. And we notice in France, uh, Emmanuel Macron was talking about... Uh, Islam in a way that if I were to say what he said back in 2016, I would have had my channel shut down. Uh, the conversation is definitely moving. I, I think that this may be why in Sweden we didn't see QR codes and uh, crackdowns on personal liberties like we saw in the rest of Europe during the pandemic because they realized that uh, the pendulum is swinging and they didn't want to give more ammo to the opposition party. And uh, what's interesting is the uh, fact that the press keeps calling uh, the current anti-immigration party to be Islamophobic. And look, I, I wonder if the press is really that dumb. L like, it's not like a politician gets on TV and says, oh, the crime is bad. Oh, the crime. Is and, and I, who live in a perfectly safe environment, will go, oh, shit. Oh, I guess... I guess the crime is bad. I guess I need to be afraid. That's not how real life works. I, I, I do think that overwhelmingly, most Swedish people do not have anything against a person who happens to be a Muslim and and happens to be a good neighbor and eats a can of shoestroming per day. Like I, I don't think that's the problem. The problem is the weaponization of Islam as a political ideology. Like when you try to create a, a movement based on a religion... And it's very similar to communism or fascism. And then you try to replace the current culture in the country you're living in with that culture based on religion. I think that's the problem. I think that that's why people are upset, right? When you commit certain acts justified by, like, well, God allows you to. That, that's probably why uh, many Swedish people have voted for the anti-immigrant party.
But if you're from Sweden, you know, feel free to let me know. Again, I don't really get that much news from Sweden because I don't understand the language, so I can't read the newspapers and all that. But I do remember back in 2016, a lot of crazy stuff coming from Sweden. I mean, um, it took a while for Germany to outdo the craziness and the UK. Uh, now, now I think like the, the top uh, bizarre countries in Europe might be UK and Germany. But we'll see, you know, I mean, uh, the competition is still out there. Uh, anyone else can manage to take the reins. Maybe France, uh, who knows? Let me know what you guys think, though, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.